الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذ أخذنا ميثاقكم ورفعنا فوقكم الطور خذوا ما آتيناكم بقوة واذكروا ما فيه لعلكم تتقون ثم تمليتم من بعد ذلك فلولا فضل الله عليكم ورحمته لكنتم لكنتم من الخاسرين ولقد علمتم الذين اعتدوا منكم في السبت فقلنا لهم كونوا كردة خاسعين فجعلناها نكالا لما بين يديها وما خلفها وموعظة للمتقين وإذ قال موسى لقومه إن الله يأمركم أن تذبحوا بقرة قالوا أتت تخذنا هزوا قال أعوذ بالله أن أكون من الجاهلين صدق الله مولانا العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن ولا ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين الله سبحانه وتعالى says وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِيثَاكَكُمْ Remember the time when I make a covenant with you أَخَذْنَا مِيثَاكَكُمْ We made a covenant with you وَرَفَعْنَا فَوْكَكُمُ الطُّورِ and we raised the mountain tour above you. Khudu ma atainakum bi quwa. And grip with full force whatever we have given to you. Was kuru ma fi ye. And bear in mind whatever uh, whatever is contained therein. La allakum tattakun so that you may become pious and virtuous. Summa tawallaytum min ba'di zalikum. And even then you turned away. Means you forsook the covenant. Falawla fadlullahi alaykum wa rahmatuhu. If the blessings and the bounties of Allah had not been upon you, لَكُنْتُمْ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ You would have become in the loss. You would have lose all what you have. All of what you have. وَلَقَدْ أَلِمْتُمُ الَّذِينَ اَعْتَدُوا مِنْكُمْ فِي الزَّبْتِ And verily you know the people amongst you who exceeded the limits فِي الزَّبْتِ in the day of Sabbath. Means in the Saturday. فَقُلْنَا لَهُمْ كُونُوا قِرَدَةً خَاسِئِينَ So we ask them to become the despised and hated monkeys. فَجَعَلْنَا هَا And we made this event نَقَالًا A deterrent punishment لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهَا وَمَا خَلْفَهَا For the people who are in front of them and behind them. وَمَوِزَةً لِلْمُتَّقِينَ And this is an advice for the pious people. وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ Remember the time when Moses said to his community, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُكُمْ أَنْ تَزْبَحُوا بَقَرَى Verily Allah enjoins you, commands you to slaughter a cow. 
Kalu they said, Atatakizuna Huzuwa. Are you making Mickey out of us? Are you taking us for a joke? Are you joking with us? Kala Auzubillahi. He said, I am I seek the refuge of my Allah and Akuna Minal Jahileen from being a member of the ignorant community. So this is the verbal translation of the passage I recited before you. Here Quran says, Wa is a khazna misa kakum rafana fokakumutur. This was has got a background when Moses came back from the mountain of Thur with his Pentateuchs, with his book, which was inscribed on the tablets of the stone. And he opened the policy and read all of the contents of the book. They plainly told him that they were not ready to accept the contents of those tablets because that was too hard to be practiced by them. So when they plainly refused to accept the contents of that book, so it was a cause of wrath of Allah. Allah said when they were enslaved by Pharaoh and his community and they were being tortured by all of the party in power and according to the civil law of that country, they were not in position to go to any court. The doors of judiciaries were also closed to them and they had got no share in the legislature and there was no power with them and they were powerless, they were slaves and they had got no properties. All of the properties were owned by the pharaoh and the party in power. They were just working for the country and taking for their needs. So that was the first life they were leading. And when I emancipated and manumitted from that wretched life, so they, therefore they should have been very thankful to, to me for the uh, emancipation of that slavery. I freed them from, from the torture, from the mental torture, from the physical torture, and they were not enjoying the life, enjoying the independence, just like common people in the world. So therefore they should have taken whatever I had given to them. When they plainly refused to accept the contents of that book, Allah asked the Gabriel to lift up the mountain tour and hang it uh, above them. So when they were under the pressure of that, that mountain, they said, Oh, our Lord, I, we are ready to accept whatever was brought by Moses' migration, peace of Allah be upon him. So look, they are the community which were, which were pressurized by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They did not accept happily the contents of their own book. And on the contrary, the Muslims were ready to be slaughtered, but they were not ready to give up the, the Holy Quran and the prophetic traditions. They were trying to practice each and every practice by the Holy Prophet. They were completely and fully committed to the precepts of the Holy Prophet. So this is a fundamental and basic difference between, the, between Islam and the other religion. The main religion in the world is Judaism, but Judaism was, start, was started by means of pressure because these were the people who were in Sinai Peninsula and they were companion of the Prophet Moses. Not only Moses, Aaron was also with them. So when they got the life of two Prophets simultaneously, they should have been more pious than the other communities in the world. But instead, they totally and plainly refused 
to accept the contents of Torah. Quran says, is akhazna mi saqakum, and remember the time when we make a covenant with you uh, about the acceptance and about the about the believing in the book. Warafana faqakum tur, and we raised up the mountain tur above you. Means you were not ready to accept accept it happily with free consent, and then we pressurized you. So here there is a question about is uh, uh, about uh, the religious policy. Quran says la ikraha fi din. Uh, there is no duress or coercion in, the, in in Islam. So here Quran says that no coercion in Islam. But here when the mountain tour was raised above them, so it is an example of rising. So the answer is first answer is the this is. Uh, this policy was adopted and followed by Islam that no one would be pressurized to accept Islam, but this is not concerning with other religion. But the research scholar are of the opinion that the same policy was uh, adopted and attempted by all of the religions because the celestial religions are not accustomed to pressurize one to accept a belief. So then, what is the answer to this question that? The Judaism, the Jews, who were in uh, Sinai Peninsula, they were pressurized. We can say, we can easily say that this is not a pressure for accepting a religion or to embrace an an Islam or a religion, but it was the apostasy because previously they had believed in Moses. May grace and peace of Allah be upon him, including. Other Saint Aaron, may grace and peace of Allah be upon him. So when they had already accepted that religion, so it was apostasy uh, on behalf of them that they rejected the contents of Torah. So when a person is apostatizes, means gives up the previous religion, true religions, and goes out of the religions. So as a punishment. He is liable to put to that, but this was a concession rate that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala gave them a chance to accept or reject. In the case of rejection, they were liable to be punished with the death. So this is the punishment of apostasy, but not the, this was a pressure to accept the religion. Now in Islam, if a person does not accept Islam. He cannot be pressurized. La ikra fi din. All of the non-Muslim residing in the Muslim countries, they are called tributaries. They pay the tax just like we are paying tax in this country. So they are tributaries in different Muslim countries, but they live there happily and freely, and their soul and property and their persons are always. Equally protected by the Muslim, by the Muslim states. Muslim state is duty bound to protect the property and honor and prestige and the person of the non-Muslim residing in Islamic country. So they are not pressurized. They are not pressurized to accept Islam. So this is a a a, a policy which was uh, which was framed by Islam and practiced, but. If a person accepts Islam, embraces Islam, and then apostatizes, means goes out of Islam, becomes murtad. So if if he becomes apostate, apostatizes, then he is liable to be, to be punished with with death. First of all, Islam will order that the, such a person should be in the detention center, in in the confinement, and The Muslim scholars would be obliged to to go there and to make him understand and to clarify the confusion or ambiguity caused by the circumstances to him, and he is uh, he is misunderstood. He is misunderstanding the contents of Islam. If he is satisfied and comes back to Islam, then there no action would be taken against him. He would not be taken to task. But when a person Insists upon the refusal to Islam, 
he rejects the contents of Islam and after the struggle of Muslim scholars to make him understand he does not come back then he is liable to put to death but this is penalty of apostatization this is not la ikrah fi din against the policy of the Quran that there is no coercion there is no pressure in Islam to make someone Muslim or to convert some uh, into Islam. Conversion to Islam is not a compulsory, uh, it, is, uh, it is a freedom which, which is enjoyed and exercised by the non-Muslims. They can live in the Islamic state without accepting Islam. But if a Muslim goes out, apostatizes, uh, he is liable to be punished with the death. Quran says, when we raise the mountain through above above you and we ask you to grip the contents contained therein the contents of Torah and this is not for my benefit you are expected to become pious and virtuous so this is for your correction for your reformation this is a reformative book. It will provide you with the proper guidance and will show, the, show you the destination. This is a common subject of the celestial book that all of the books are sent down by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the prophets. They are to provide the human being with the proper guidance. There is no interest of Allah and there is no benefit taken by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is above taking the benefits from anyone. But all of the contents of the celestial books are to reform the human being and to maintain peace and law and order. The revelation of the celestial book is to reform the humanity, their moral, their ethics, their ideology, their practice, their relationship between the, uh, between the society, among the society. There are Allah says, so that you may become the pious and virtuous. And again, you turn away, means you for, forsook, you gave up the covenant, you did not practice, you did not follow your, your, your way, and you did not keep your words, but you turned away, means the contents of Torah was violated by you. So these are the, min, the, the pinpoints and faults and mistakes of the Judaism and the people residing in Medina Thayyiba with the name of Jews are being addressed by Muhammad Rasulullah and by the Holy Quran that you are not going to accept Islam. So this is not because you you could not understand the contents of the Holy Quran, but this is your nature. You are accustomed to violate the divine law and to, to transgress and to, to do wrong in front of the prophets. Even two prophets were there and book was revealed and the mountain Thur was, uh, was raised above your head and you accepted the contents of the book and you made a covenant, covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in spite of all these facts you violated and you did not practice, practice the contents of the Holy Quran. So therefore we can easily analogize you on your previous forefathers and ancestors that you are not going to, uh, to accept Islam therefore we are not going to coerce you you are completely independent whether you accept Islam or don't accept it. Quran says, Falawla fadlullahi alaykum wa rahmatuhu lakuntum min al khasirin. If the blessings and the bounties of Allah had not been upon you, you would have suffered the loss, you would have been in the loss. And you would have been destroyed by the wrath of Allah because by the violation and not only violation but 
mentally and ideologically re rejection of the divine law is apostatization you should have been you should have been killed and completely uh, finished uh, by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but it was bounty of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you would not have been killed you would uh, you were not uh, you were not killed quran says وَلَقَدْ عَلِمْتُمُ الَّذِينَ اَعْتَدَوْ مِنْكُمْ فِي السَّبْتِ فَقُلْنَا لَهُمْ كُونُوا كِرَدَتَنَا خَاسِئِينَ And you know very well the people amongst you who violated and desecrated uh, and committed the blasphemy against the day of Sabbath. Means you were duty bound to, to pay the respect to that day. That day was a sacred day for you and you are duty bound to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this uh, quotation has got a very long background uh, the history of the biblical sciences says that when the book was given to them and Moses began to paradise them and to teach them and to make them practice the contents of Torah uh, in in this very uh, period they were uh, they were guided by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to pay the respect to to the sabbath means to the sacred day because according to the ideology of uh, the Jew, jews and christians according to the biblical sciences the uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, had made the the universe the skies and the grounds and the earth within six days and the seven days was preserved for the rest according to their ideology we don't believe that allah needs a rest allah is completely above from all of the vicissitudes and all of the ups and downs of the the the, the creature as human being gets tired or falls ill, Allah is complete from all of these vicissitudes. And they say that the seventh day, means such a day, was preserved by Allah to take rest. Therefore, all of the uh, all of the Jews were ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take rest and to pay respect that day. That day was not only for taking rest, but for worshipping of Allah and not doing anything but just to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the liturgical activities were necessary for them to be practiced but they they did the they, they violated the law and uh, the fishing was also prohibited the hunting the other hunting were also prohibited because that day was exclusively for worshipping of Allah and taking the rest. No hunting was allowed, no fishing was allowed, no other uh, worldly business was allowed. Business was also prohibited. All of the shops and all of the shopping centers and the other social activities were prohibited for them except taking the rest and, uh, and uh, following the liturgical activities, the worshipping, the devotion. But when at a, a time, a period passed away, they began to violate the law. In those days, uh, it was experienced that the fish would come on the surface of the sea in a large number, very abnormally uh, in abundance, and they thought that that day was very suitable for fishing and that business could have been flourished by means of hunting on Saturday but it was a great uh, ordeal and examination for them this was a great uh, trial for them it was not allowed for them to to fish or to hunt anything else so they hit upon a thought that certain ponds uh, should be made on the bank of the sea and the fish should be enclosed in those 
in in those ponds and after after that day means a sunday or monday all of the fishes enclosed and confined there should be hunted so this this remedy was was sought, was sought out by them quran says so this was a deception to the law of to the law of allah and to the law of moses may grace and peace of allah be upon him quran says they began to fish with this way the word of fishing or hunting the fish could not be used in those days on this uh, on this tactics but this tactics was just to deceive the divine law allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that the main purpose of the sacredness of that that day was to avoid everything else except the uh, except the worship of worshiping of allah and taking the rest but you began to make many type of tactics and many type of measures to deceive the divine law therefore you are going to be to be penalized by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala quran says fa kulna lahum kunu khiradatan khasiin so allah said become allah allah asked them to, to become uh, the monkeys which are despised and hated by the people so monkey was enough what is the benefit of khasiin khasiin despised and hated and condemned by the people so according to shah abdul aziz sam muhaddis delvi this uh, additional qualities face uh, face an additional meaning what semantically it makes a lot of difference monkey as a monkey is an animal they were they were disfigured they were transformed and they were transmuted in into the monkeys shabd wazi some of the then we say is that khasiin means the monkey has got no conscience of his own he cannot consider the matter by himself but he always copies the others without any consideration of loss or benefit so when the special quality of a monkey was found here then they were changed into the monkeys which are khasiin we despised and hated so here we come to the conclusion that if a person has got no conscience of his own he has got no ideology and no conceptions and no doctrines but always follows the other people he is quality wise a monkey he is just like monkeys so this is a quality of monkey this is not a quality of human being just like now it is we see the people that they always try to follow every modernity every model which is invented in the society they don't care whether whether this is beneficial or the detrimental without any discrimination they follow the other people the wealthy countries are being followed in respect of their fashion the shaving of the beard the style of the mustaches the styles of the the clothes the pants the trousers are mostly a copy of the other people so if a person does not does not consider his his comfort or discomfort as he his uh, easy practice or difficult pra- practice so he is, his mind is just like monkeys muslim should follow muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam because every action and omission by the holy prophet is for the beneficial uh, is uh, for the benefit of the human society all of the things were made by the holy prophet just for the interest of hum- human being either in this world or in the next world therefore a muslim should confirmly believe that all of the the practice of muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and all of the omissions by the holy prophet are just for the benefit of the human being 
and practice of every person can be relied upon according to his knowledge since our holy prophet was fully aware of the the events which are going to happen in this world and in the next world and in the eschatology means in the barzakh lyzium means when nabi karim sallallahu was fully aware therefore he advised his community to follow him for instance you mostly know that when a dead body is placed in the graveyard two angels comes come there and begins to ask the questions about the uh, divinity of allah and the about islam about reality of islam and about the prophet of muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so these things are totally unseen secrets but the unseen secrets was fully known by muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam therefore everybody every muslim is duty bound to believe on the in the accuracy of the knowledge of the holy prophet and should fully committed to the precepts of the holy prophet but if he also does not care for for the obedience of the prophet but he copies the other people irrespective of the benefit or the loss and regardless of the good or bad so his mind is just like monkey muslims are muslims and they are duty bound to to be convinced by the teachings of the holy prophet and they should be fully committed to the precepts of the holy prophet and they should follow him so this was the uh, people this was the position of the people who were liable to be punished kuno kiradatan khasin but here uh, there are many different opinions of the muslim scholar some of them say that they were not disfigured they they were not transmuted their bodies remained the same but their men the their mental position was changed into the monkeys they were doing and eating and drinking and sleeping and moving like the monkeys without any consideration of humanity but this opinion is very weak the words of the holy quran explains that they were disfigured they were distorted and they were transmuted and they were completely changed into the form of the monkeys but those monkeys did not live for a long time after a few days they died away and what was the reason of their transmutation the the reason for their transmutation was quran says lo in allazina kafaru min bani israil ala lisan dawud wa isa ibn maryam zalik wa ma asaw wa kanu ya'tadun kanu la yatnahun am munkarin faluhu labbi sama kanu yaf'alun quran says the bani israil the children of israel who attempted the infidelity who became infidels they were cursed by David may grace and peace of Allah be upon him and by Jesus as well may grace and peace of Allah be upon him what was the reason of their penalization Quran says they were chastised they were imposed the torturing torment because zalik ma asaw wa kanu yatadun they committed the disobedience of Allah and they were transgressing but this was ambiguous the ambigu- ambiguity cannot be clarified without the attachment and affiliation of the next verse next verse says kanu la yatna hun an munkar in falu ho when some of them were fishing the other people were just watching them and not preventing them fishing quran here says that there were three groups one was to prevent the people fishing as well and one group was fishing and the third group was uh, not fishing neither prohibiting the people the fishing persons were penalized for their practice because they, this was it was an express provision of disobedience to allah subhanahu wa taala the law of divine was 
uh, completely uh, disobeyed by them and very openly and the other group who were not fishing and not uh, exercising the silence but they were preventing the fishing people they were saying that this was against the constitution prescribed for the Judaism and that was not allowed for them therefore they should not hunt the fish fishing was completely prohibited for them and they were expressly uh, violating the law of so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the third group who was not fishing nor prohibiting both group the fishing people and the other people who were not fishing but not preventing the other people who were fishing so these two groups were challenged in the same section and they were dealt with alike because Nabi Kareem Salaam says Marra'a minkum munkaran fal yukayyiruh bi yadihi fa illam yastatifa bi lisanihi fa illam yastatifa bi qalbihi fa zalika adha'afu al-eeman whosoever happens to see the, the bad thing is being committed his duty is to prevent the people by force if he can but if he is not in position to control the people by force he should prevent them uh, he should prevent them committing the crime or, or violating the law by tongue and if he is not in position to express himself in front of the people uh, and there is a legal pressure on him and he is uh, helpless to to keep quiet so in such a case he should hate he should hate by heart so these are three stages if a person does not prevent the criminal people and he does not commit the crime and the people who are who are avoiding the commission of the crime as well and prohibiting the other people as well only those people were saved by Allah and their their salvation was made by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but the other two groups were uh, challenged in the same section and they were penalized with the same pattern and the same volume uh, therefore all of the Muslims are duty bound to check the affairs of other Muslims not only Muslims but his duty is to protect honor and respect and soul and body and the property of other people if a person uh, sees that looks at the people uh, committing the crime and he does not prevent them he is liable to be punished all of the Muslims are duty bound to Amr bil Maruf and Nay al Munkir to ask the other people to do the good thing and to prohibit the people forbid the people doing the wrong things Amr bil Maruf and Nay al Munkir this institute is called vigilance of people vigilance of people is also an institute of law this is also legal institute all of the Muslims as they are bound to make a law their legislation should work and the executive is duty bound to implement the law and the judiciary is duty bound to decide the cases the affairs according to the demand of the law similarly the vigilance of people is also an institute of law they should also work they should be very vigilant about the whereabouts about whereabouts of everybody and their duty is to be aware of the environment and ecology ecological effects should also be avoided by the Muslims Quran says and we uh, <coughs> we made it a deterrent punishment for all of the for all of the human being we made it a deterrent punishment means their transmutation in the form of the monkey was a punishment but what was the nature of this punishment this punishment can be called deterrent punishment there are four 
views about the uh, the about the punishment, the retributive punishment, the reformative punishment, the preventive punishment, and the deterrent punishment. Inshallah, or uh, the next chapter, all of the details about these type of punishment would be given. But at the moment, I would like to say a few of them. The retributive punishment is a punishment which which has got a purpose of retaliation. For instance, a murderer is murdered or hanged or imposed a uh, a death penalty just for sake of the retaliation. This is called retributive punishment. The other punishment, reformative punishment, for to correct the people, to reform the pe- people, just like the the criminal persons which are not liable to be to be punished directly they are detained in the detention centers they are called reformatory centers so they are put there and they are educated and they are medically treated as well just to just to make them just to prevent them taking the drugs the narcotics are intoxicate intoxicating and the moral also taught to them and the contents of the book in islamic world the contents of the holy quran and the prophetic traditions are also communicated to them just to reform them uh, ideologically and practically they this is called reformative reformative punishment and the retributive punishment and the formative punishment and uh, the preventive punishment preventive punishment is a punishment which is cause uh, which is causes disability to the criminal so that they may not repeat the same crime just like the robbers uh, the robbers uh, one leg and one hand from different sides are cut off just to disable them to commit the robbery again and the deterrent punishment is a punishment which is given to the criminals just to show the the people that if any other person does the same he would be dealt with with the same pattern with the same value with the same volume just like a, a person a, a apostatized person apostate uh, is hanged and on the cross road just to prevent the other people to commit the uh, apostasy means the apostasy is highly uh, a culpable action therefore uh, he is given the enhanced punishment he is punished for his apostasy uh, he is hanged and why he is hanged why is he hanged in the crossroad just to teach the moral to the other people so that the other people uh, people may uh, learn the lesson and achieve the moral this is the end of my lecture inshallah tomorrow i shall give the further information about this very subject wama alaina illa albalagh almubin wa akhir dawana anil hamdulillah rabbil alamin was salatu was salam ala rasulil karim alhamdulillah